आई एम डॉक्टर इनेश शाह ऑफ बिजनेस स्कूल एस एम कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग आई एम हेयर टू टेल यू अबाउट द इंटर कंट्रैक्ट टू एक्ट एवरी वन ऑफ आस एंटर इन टू ए नंबर ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑलमोस्ट एवरी डे एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम वी डू सो विदाउट इवन रियलाइजिंग वॉट वी आर डूइंग फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ लॉ A person seldom realizes that when he entrusts his car to a mechanic, he uh, he enters into a contract of bailment, or when he buys a packet of biscuits, he is entering into a contract of sale of goods, or when a person goes to the cinema. to see a movie he is making yet another contract and so on thus as a seller a buyer a student as a customer we must know what is a contract the law of contract is applicable not only to the business community but to whole of the society and but also to others so let me uh, tell you the scheme of the contract act the law of contract act in india comes under act of 1872 the scheme of the act is that it is divided into two major groups number 1 is general principles of the law of contract and second specific contracts and the specific contract is subdivided into number 1 contract of indemnity and guarantee second contract of bailment and pledge and the third is contract of agency these all contracts come under section 1 uh, 200 to 238 yes now the question is what is a contract when we use term contract what contract is in the eyes of law a contract under section to subsection h of the indian contract act of 1872 is an agreement enforceable by law a contract therefore is an agreement the object of which is to create legal obligation that is it is duty bound it is its duty is that it should be enforceable by law a contract essentially consists of two elements now how contract is formed the first thing is that there has to be an agreement and the second thing is that it has to have legal obligation so we can say that agreement is equal to proposal plus acceptance now what is an agreement when we say agreement 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 is a promise or we can say promise is a is an agreement a proposal when accepted becomes a promise an agreement therefore comes into being only when one party gives makes a proposal and the other party gives his acceptance in short agreement is the sum total of offer and acceptance now how to testify whether an agreement is a valid contract for that i will suggest that to test an agreement it is 
important to see whether it contains all the essentials of a valid contract. Now, what are the essentials of a valid contract? The first thing is the offer. There must be offer and acceptance. There must be lawful offer. Very important is that when a person makes an offer, he must make a lawful offer. That should be legal in the eyes of law and then it has to have a lawful acceptance. That means that the acceptance of the offer thus resulting in an agreement. So there we can say there must be a lawful offer and lawful acceptance to the offer thus resulting in an agreement. Then second thing is there has to have an intention to create legal relationship. There must be intention to create legal relationship among the parties. Now agreements of social or domestic nature do not create legal obligation. For example, agreements to die, dine at friend's residence is not an agreement in the eyes of law. Because when we say an agreement to dine at friend's residence is not an agreement because it doesn't create legal relationship and the intention is not to create legal relationship and therefore is not a contract. Again, let me tell you that agreements between husband and wife also lack the intention to create legal relationship and thus do not result in contracts. I can elaborate on this point like this because these are the technical issues one must be very clear about what is an agreement and what is a contract how agreements become contracts and how say contracts are contracts now just now i have said that social or domestic nature of agreements do not create legal obligation I will give an example. Husband promises his wife to get a sari if she will sing a song. She sings a song. His wife sings a song, but his husband does not bring a sari for her. Wife cannot bring a suit against his husband because it does not create legal relationship. The intention is not <coughs> to create legal relationship. So therefore, my point is that when she sang a song, so she cannot go to the court of law to enforce the agreement as it lacked the intention to create legal relationship. <clears throat> On the other hand, in commercial agreements, an intention to create legal relationship is presumed. Thus, an agreement to buy and sell goods intend to create legal relationship. Hence, it is a contract provided other requisites of a valid contract are present. Now the third thing is third essential element of a valid contract is that there has to be lawful consideration. In any contract presence of consideration is important. Now the question arises what is a consideration? What a consideration means in the eyes of law. Let me tell you that consideration is the price paid by the one party for the promise of the other. For example, I am delivering a lecture. I am paid for this. This is a consideration that I will get a money or I am getting a money or I have received a money. So this means 
the consideration we find teacher is delivering a lecture in the class doctor is attending a patient doctor is attending a patient and the clerk is at his desk and the prime minister or the lieutenant governor or for that matter any bureaucrat is working at his desk why because they get money uh, this is the consideration and what they deliver is the consideration for those for whom they work so in short consideration basically is the price paid by one party for the promise of the other an agreement is enforceable only when either of the parties to it give something and get something so giving something and getting something is the consideration so it may be past it may be present or future say let me explain it again with an example for example i am delivering a lecture i may get remuneration of it just now after finishing the lecture or say i may get it after 15 days or i may get it say i might might have get it uh, i might have got it in advance so it may be uh for future for past or for present so it depends upon the circumstances of each particular case but however we must be say aware about this that the consideration may be an act of doing something or not doing something or a promise to do or not to do something for example fraudulent practices injury to the person or property of another is immoral or is opposed to public policy so if the two parties enter into an agreement the purpose should not be to defeat the law the law is supreme so in no way our agreement should be opposed to public policy that i will i mean deliberate upon this issue later so we can say that on analyzing the <coughs> Uh, what i have revealed so far you might come to this conclusion that when an agreement is formed that there has there must be two parties to make an agreement so because one party cannot enter into an agreement with himself so there has to be two persons at least to make an agreement or there has to be two parties to make an agreement so plural the second thing is that both the parties to an agreement must agree <coughs> upon <coughs> must agree about the subject matter of the ag agreement in the same sense and in the same and at the same time now let me uh, tell you what it means in the eyes of law when somebody say something i must be able to understand him in the same sense the same sense and the same time and at the same time is very important the third thing third essential of a valid contract is legal obligation an agreement to become a contract must give rise to a legal obligation that is duly that it should be duly enforceable by law if it's not enforceable by law if it doesn't come under the umbrella of law then we can say that it is not a contract so therefore we can say that all therefore we can say that all contracts are all agreements but all agreements are not contracts now here agreements of moral religious or social nature for example a promise to lunch together at a 
friend's house or to take a walk together are not contracts because they are not likely to create a duty enforceable by law friend he might have spent thousands of rupees to make different dishes for his friend his friend gives his acceptance to him that he will come and have a dinner with him with his friend but he doesn't turn up and he doesn't take the dinner with his friend his friend cannot bring a suit against his friend because he has not dined with him he has not i mean uh, taken a dinner or lunch whatsoever the offer was with him because such kind of an offer such kind of acceptance is simply a, a social or you can say that all moral religious or social i mean agreements are not enforceable by law in business business agreements on the other hand the presumption is usually that the parties intend to create legal relationship thus an agreement to buy certain specific goods at an agreed price for example 50 bags of sugar at rupees say 100 per bag is a contract because it gives rise to a duty enforceable by law now here in case of a default on the part of either party an actual for action an action for breach of contract could be enforced through a court provided other essentials of a valid contract are laid down under as in under section say 10 are present there now the next important element is that capacities of parties to a contract now the parties who are going to make a contract they must be capable of making such contract in the eyes of law they must be competent to contract otherwise it cannot be enforceable by law in order to be competent to contract parties must be of the age of maturity and of sound mind and not disqualified from contracting by any law which they are subject to now here for example a minor is a minor cannot make a agreement cannot make a contract because he is not eligible now on the other hand if a person is of 50 years of age but he is idiot but he is lunatic but he is unsound mind he is not eligible to make a contract that's what the law says capacity of party so it means that when in contract is formed the person is must be capable of making such contract how would there are certain exceptions where uh, you can make a contract with uh, with a minor so for example if one of the parties to the agreement suffers from say minority idiocy drunkenness etc so is not enforceable at law now except in some special cases what are those special cases for example in the case of a necessaries subject apply subject supply to a minor necessaries of life supply to a minor or lunatic the supplier of the goods is entitled to be reimbursed from their estate this is under section uh section 68 now next thing essential of a valid contract is free consent free consent means that the parties must have agreed upon the same thing and in the same sense free consent means that there, sh there should be no coercion there should be no undue influence 
there should be no fraud there should be no mistake or there should not be any misrepresentation so free consent means free from every angle of the law so in such situations the contract would be voidable at the option of agreed parties if it is formed under coercion if it is formed under undue influence misrepresentation fraud or mistake so what is that it is voidable at the option of one party means that if a person who is forced to make an agreement or a contract for example somebody tells me that i i will shoot you if you will not sell your car to me for rupees 10000 when my car costs say rupees 5 lakhs now he threatens me there is a coercion and there is, he says that you have to sell your car to me by force under in say under undue influence say under threat i agree to his proposal but at the same time there is a lot of scope provided by law that i can approach court before say the sale is uh, before the transfer of my car to him say for example he gives me 3 months time that if you will not sell this car to me for rupees 100 within 3 months i will shoot you i know that he is uh, i mean vulnerable for my life i must approach court of law before 3 months that certain such person threatens me tells me that he will shoot me that if i will not sell my car to him or shoot or whatsoever it may be the court i can avoid such type of agreement because it is it has there is no free consent from my side there is a coercion there is a threat to my life so law says that you can avoid this it is a voidable contract so there are few more points now lawful object lawful object means that i, I would like to finish it within 2 or 3 minutes uh, so lawful object means that the parties must agree uh, and the object should be to to give i mean supreme priority to law because law says that when you law calls for i mean law calls us to abide because ignorance of law is no excuse if we uh, uh, move in any direction so for making a contract there the agreement must be the object must be lawful so lawful if it is not lawful if it is illegal if it is immoral kind of an agreement and or if it is opposed to public policy then we say we can say that it's not lawful and law is not going to i mean come to uh, one's rescue one's help if the agreement is not lawful the object is not lawful now i can give an example for example a landlord knowingly lets a house for immoral activities he cannot recover the rent through a court of law for example if somebody lets his house knowingly to the gamblers and he is allowing them to play cards there to carry immoral activities which are opposed to public policy now later on the parties to whom he has let out the house he can not i mean recover the rent from them knowing this thing that the agreement itself is not valid in the eyes of law 
Then one more thing is that uh, all agreements are required to be in writing and then there has to be a registration. But if we we'll go through with the Contract Act of 1872 Indian Contract Act, we uh, there will we find find out that oral or in writing you can you can go for contract. For example, we buy milk, we buy bread, we buy vegetables. These two are the contracts, but we don't come in writing. Law permits us, but in certain special cases. This, there has to be, I mean, agreement in writing. For example, in the case of immoral property, you have to make, I mean, an agreement in writing and then registered under the Transfer of Property Act of 1882. Then certainty. What is a certainty? agreements the meaning of which is not certain are capable of being made certain or wide now let me give an example for example a agrees to sell b a hundred tons of oil there is nothing whatsoever to show what kind of oil was, I mean, to be sold. So therefore, what kind of oil was intended? Is it a machine oil? Is it a Indian oil? Is it a eatable oil? We must be certain. If we don't know what kind of kind is very important if you have to purchase a soap which soap which make which price so we must be certain then one more thing is that possibility of performance possibility of performance agreement to do an act impossible in its, in itself is a wide what does it mean now possibility of performance for example koi kisi se kehta hai ki ji main aapko wahan pe khazana milke dunga aapko wahan pe khazana milega aap mere ko itne paise de dijiye 10 lakh rupaye mujhe de dijiye aapko ek bahut bada khazana wahan se main aapke nikal ke dunga kya uske paas koi aladdin ka charag hai कि वो उसे वहाँ पे उसके जोदाई चराग से वो खजाना निकाल के दे ऐसा नहीं हो सकता है ऐसा पॉसिबल नहीं है लेकिन मेरे कहने का मतलब यही है कि बात वही करनी चाहिए या मिसाल के तौर पे आप कह रहे हैं किसी से कि अगर आप ये मेरी फैक्ट्री खरीदेंगे वो कहता है जी मैं खरीद लूँगा कितने पैसे देने हैं आप कहते हैं उसको जी आपने एक करोड़ रुपये देना है वो कहता है मैं दूँगा एक करोड़ रुपया आपको ठीक है लेकिन आप मुझे ये बता दीजिए कि ये कितने टन्स ऑयल या इसकी प्रोडक्शन क्या है मान लीजिए वो आपसे कहता है कि इसकी प्रोडक्शन एक लाख टन्स है लेकिन आपको पता चलता है कि नहीं इसकी वो कैपेसिटी नहीं है तो आप इस कंट्रैक्ट को अवॉइड कर सकते हैं तो किसी कंट्रैक्ट को किसी एग्रीमेंट को कंट्रैक्ट कहने के लिए आपको इन एसेंशियल्स ऑफ जो एसेंशियल्स ऑफ ए वैलिड कंट्रैक्ट है ये देखने पड़ेंगे इन पे आपने एग्रीमेंट को परखना पड़ेगा और उनको परखने के बाद अगर आपको लगता है कि हाँ जी इस एग्रीमेंट में ये सारी चीज़ें हैं पहली चीज़ कि आप यही देखेंगे कि वहाँ पे ऑफर एक्सेप्टेंस फिर आप देखेंगे कि वहाँ पे कंसिड्रेशन फिर आप देखेंगे लॉफुल ऑब्जेक्ट 
फिर आप देखेंगे फ्री कंसेंट फिर आप देखेंगे कैपेसिटीज ऑफ पार्टीज टू अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फिर आप देखेंगे कि क्या ये राइटिंग में है फिर आप देखेंगे कि इसमें सर्टनटी है फिर आप ये देखेंगे कि पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस है और अगर ये सारी चीज़ें हैं तब तो आप ये कह सकते हैं कि ये एग्रीमेंट जो है कॉन्ट्रैक्ट है तो इसीलिए हम कहते हैं कि दैट ऑल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स और ऑल एग्रीमेंट्स बट ऑल एग्रीमेंट्स आर नॉट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स आए दिन हम कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स करते रहते हैं लेकिन हमें ये पता नहीं होता है कि हम कानून की बंदिशों में आ रहे हैं हम इग्नोरेंट हैं हमें पता ही नहीं होता है कि इस बारे में कानून भी है जो कुछ भी हम कर रहे हैं इस बारे में कानून भी है तो इसलिए मेरे आज के इस लेक्चर का मकसद यही है कि हम ये समझे कि हम एग्रीमेंट किसको कहते हैं एग्रीमेंट कैसे बनाए जाते हैं और इनके बनाने का मकसद क्या है इससे हमें आइंदा कोई मुश्किल नहीं आएगी अगर हम कानून के कानून का पालन करें और कानून को जानें और पढ़ें ये सिर्फ बिजनेसमैन के लिए ही नहीं बल्कि हम सब के लिए ज़रूरी है थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग इन शाइल कम नेक्स्ट सम अदर टाइम एंड डेफिनेटली डिलीवर अनदर लेक्चर